Welcome to the Chapter 5 Part 1 Lecture. You should use the information in this lecture to fill out the guided notes for Chapter 5 Part 1, and of course, you should do this before you attend class. Our first category of macromolecules are the carbohydrates, those wonderfully sweet tasting molecules that we're always trying to avoid in our diets. Now we're gonna talk all about carbohydrates and what they're for and what they do. But first, you guys are gonna to wanna to know how to recognize a carbohydrate. So over here on the right-hand side, we have a carb. This one's considered a simple carb. We'll talk about what that means in a minute. So how do I know this is a carb? Well, all carbohydrates consist of a carbon backbone, which you can see, several carbons in a row. And attached to many of these carbons, you will also find hydroxyl groups. A hydroxyl there, a hydroxyl there, lots and lots of hydroxyls. In fact, the abbreviation for a carb carbohydrate is CH2O to the N. And what this refers to are these chains, C, two H's, and an O. If you go up one, C, two H's, and an O. So CH2O multiplied to the N, which can be any number. Another way to recognize carbohydrates is by the name, and the names typically end in the suffix os. So think about words you know that end in os. Glucose, lactose, sucrose, fructose. Those are all carbohydrates. So look for hydroxyls, and look for O's. Carbohydrates have two major functions inside living cells. First of all, they are a major energy source for cells. Carbohydrates are far easier for cells to break down than lipids or proteins. Your brain uses something like 25% of the total carbs that you eat. So we need carbohydrates in our diet, just not so many processed carbs as we most of us get. So how does this kind of work? Well, let's say you're eating fruit and you get some fructose. That fructose will be broken down and the energy will be pulled out and it will be shuttled into a molecule called ATP. We're going to talk about how this metabolic pathway works in more detail in a later chapter. The second function of carbohydrates is structural. Some carbohydrates actually make physical structures inside and outside of cells. A great example of that is the cell wall that surrounds plant cells. Now our cells don't have cell walls, but plants do. And that uh, stiff, rigid wall that protects the cell is actually made out of carbs, out of something called cellulose. So it makes a physical structure. Carbohydrates have monomers, dimers, and polymers. In this group, the words for the monomers, dimers, and polymers are going to be accompanied by the word saccharide. So the monomers are called monosaccharides. The dimers are disaccharides, and the polymers are called polysaccharides. Now carbohydrates can exist either as chains or as rings. So that's what you're seeing here, is that the chain has folded over on itself into a ring shape. And that's another characteristic you can look for when you're examining molecules. Carbohydrates often appear as pentagons or hexagons, especially in an aqueous environment like those found inside cells. So here we have a single ring, so that constitutes one monosaccharide, one small monomer. Here are two put together, we call that a disaccharide. And here are a bunch put together into a long chain, we call that a polysaccharide. To help you remember the word saccharide, let's talk about it, what it actually means. Saccharide comes from the word saccharin, and if something is described as being very, very saccharine, it's really, really overly sweet. For instance, I don't know if you've seen this product, but this is called a smitten mitten. It is a knitted mitten made for people who want to hold hands. 
and here it even kind of takes on a little bit of a heart shape. That is very, very sweet. We could describe that invention as being saccharin. You may have also have heard of a chemical called saccharin. Saccharin makes up that product sweet and low. It's a sweetener, it tastes sweet. Here's a picture of the molecule itself. So when you hear monosaccharide, I want you to think one unit and very, very sweet. So it must be the monomer of a carbohydrate. The smallest carbohydrates, also known as the simple sugars, are called monosaccharides. Monosaccharides consist of between three and seven carbons in either a chain or a ring. Here we have a little chain that consists of three carbons. Up here we have a ring and it consists of one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. So it's a monosaccharide as well. Now all of these monosaccharides are going to have a carbonyl group. Here you can see it on this guy. It will also have multiple hydroxyls. So here's one, there's one on this. Up here, this guy's got lots of hydroxyls. One, two, three, four, at least that many. Monosaccharides can be classified either based on the position of their carbonyl group or based on the number of carbons that they have. That's a skill we're going to work on during class time. For now, you should just know that they can be classified that way. These are the major monosaccharides that you should know. By far, the most common monosaccharide in nature is this molecule, glucose. Its chemical formula is C6H12O6. Now it's known as blood sugar, and that's true, we do have it in our blood, but it doesn't just come from blood. Um, we find it in all sorts of different cells. It's a major energy source for living things. These two monosaccharides are found in DNA and RNA, respectively. Deoxyribose is what the D stands for in DNA. Ribose is what the R stands for in RNA. So we'll see how it helps make up these molecules later. Fructose is a close chemical cousin of glucose. It is known as fruit sugar. It is produced by plants. You also find it in high fructose corn syrup that we find in all of those great processed foods. Galactose is kind of a weird one. We mainly talk about it because it helps make up a bigger sugar known as lactose. And I know you've heard of lactose before. So we'll look at it in a second. Two different forms of glucose exist we call these structural isomers. So remember that structural isomers have the same chemical formulas, but slightly different structures. They're put together slightly differently. Here we have alpha glucose. Now remember that this molecule is three-dimensional. So in alpha glucose, this hydroxyl sticks down under the molecule, and so does this one. So they both stick down. In this other form though, called beta glucose, one hydroxyl group sticks up, and the one right next to it sticks down. Now that's going to make a big difference when these monomers are used to build bigger polymers, and we'll see how that works a little bit later. For now, keep in mind that the two forms exist and that they are slightly different from one another. 